tonight's film comes from Turkey. Uh, it's a country that is in constant movement, in constant motion. We have an impression that what we see from the cinema of Turkey is always still. The film that you're going to see tonight is the complete opposite, actually, and it's a film that really shows you how vivid uh, Istanbul is as a city. Uh, in her feature debut, Haya Letla, Ghosts, filmmaker Azra Deniz Okye pl plunges us deep into the streets of Istanbul. It's a city that is dealing with, with constant gentrification, a city that is at times very ruthless, very harsh, but also it's a place in which its inhabitants, at least some of them, uh, show a sense of true solidarity will be crossing paths with four different characters and their fates intertwine on the, over the course of a single day. The film premiered last year at the Critics Week of the Venice Film Festival and it won the grand prize. And um, the filmmaker Azra has been touring incessantly over the past couple of months. We're very happy that she's with us tonight in Frankfurt to present the film. Azra. Thank you for coming. I'm so happy to find you. It's my last day of touring, so I'm so tired, but so happy to see you all of here with the corona, but your courage uh, and seeing a Turkish film also. Um, I want to say that uh, I, um, I needed to make this film, uh, taking many pictures, like a war photographer um, archiving my generation. I made this film in 17 days of shooting, so I don't c recommend anybody to making that. But uh, I made this film because I need to get a breath. I need to uh, say what I need to say uh, as a young director and a scriptwriter. This film is like my manifesto. I really believe on cinema. We can change the world also. So I want to also dedicate uh, this film tonight to Chilam uh, Doan, a woman who uh, been um, punished by the government yesterday for uh, killing her a rapist. There is actually there is a big problem with Istanbul Convention in Turkey. So I uh, I hope that you will enjoy this punk opera and see the lights and our colors of Istanbul. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're going to have a conversation after the film, so please stay with us and enjoy the film. Thank you for staying with us. It's always nice to see a full house theater, even if <laughs> under different conditions. We're very happy to have with us uh, Azra to discuss a bit her film uh, that you just saw tonight. Um, which is a film, I, I think when I saw the film, I was very surprised with so many things. Um, I work here at DFF as diversity manager, and we're always dealing with a set of topics uh, that people are really terrified of speaking about or are tired of hearing. And in your film, we're speaking about patriarchy, we're speaking about sexism, we're speaking about gentrification. Um, you mentioned in the beginning that it really took you five years to write the film. How did you, how did you incorporate all of these topics into the script of the film that we just saw? Thank you. Um, for me, uh, living in Turkey, uh, you cannot really dissociate one subject to another one. This is the only important first uh, say, uh, thing that I can say. As a woman in Turkey, for existing, uh, you are of course dealing with some guys who is completely involved with this structure of a city who is being getting destroyed. They are really reacting like a woman body. The, the destruction is something so normal, they are even not asking. So it's not about uh, having a point of view of feminism, it's about post-feminism. I, I, I even don't want to mention the subject, of course, because everybody has to be feminist at the end. And, uh, and writing this uh, script, the country was changing, and all the subjects that were we were have to deal with it became uh, normal. So I want to uh, make you feel like a one emotion on 
on uh, after all that you saw, like what is this frustration or what? And this chaos, um, how to be guide you for this um, for this emotion? Um, I'm being inspired by um, Noemi Klein, Shock Doctrine. She's mentioning that if you have many shocks, you even don't remember the first shock. And what is this naturalization? Writing that, it was the only point for me for uh, survive. And then bringing my own tools uh, from video art, not using classical way, because I wanted to make my, with my own rules, that nobody gave me in Turkey for a living. So yeah, it was the point of the film. And from writing, you went into shooting the film. You mentioned in the beginning as well that uh, you had shot this film in 17 days. And I was really surprised because there are millions of locations. Um, I was really interested how it felt for you to shoot the script that you wrote in a city that is constantly changing. So it felt like also the city is changing while you were shooting it. How was it for you to shoot the film in such a short period of time? Um, I work with the team before in pro-production uh, with the DOP and the editor on the same table a few uh, weeks, like where the camera I have to turn and how I need to edit before even the shooting. Because you know that you're gonna uh, enter to a big chaos and you know uh, how to, uh, it's like uh, knowing very well the concerto and having a maybe improvisation moment for really dealing with this uh, chaos. And the team was so uh, well um, exercised before for this uh, triathlon marathon, you know? You cannot en enter just uh, for having fun. Uh, 17 days, it was not a choice. We didn't have the money. Uh, so it was $70,000 for just the production, it's nothing. And then we get the French production for when Venice Film Festival choosing us. By the way, I was almost finished the film. So I didn't have the fund. Um, but uh, making this film was so important for us with Dilek Aydan because we didn't have a space for, ex for um, as a cinematic language. So we decided to make it so ma no what matter what in a punk way. And we began to be creative um, every day for everything. Like one day before I was calling on the night my team saying, okay, if we cannot cut the electricity on the area, you have to think about the B, uh, plan B, C, D, like uh, if you need to cut uh, electricity cables or you have to find some stones for, um, you know, I, I, they have to be, I was so uh, not so kind sometimes, but <laughs> we, we need to, we were going to a war, so we need to think about everything. So I was so calm on the shooting all the time and we, we learn to become in uh, really chaotic moments, like one of the last plan seconds of the film, when the, there is fires, uh, the place is burning. We call the police before we get authorizations with a censored script, of course, before, for uh, weeks ago. And suddenly they completely uh, forget that, and they enter with five tanks and Toyota Kalashnikov pointing to my team, thinking that we were beginning a riot, in the area because Gulansu it's a Kurdish um, uh, area and everybody was in prison by the way so they were like who who's making the riot so and we were like yeah it's us we are making a film they didn't understand when I was saying I'm the filmmaker they were like what it was like I'm saying I'm an astronaut it was really shocking for them I repeat six times uh, explaining what is it filmmaking you know and kind of stuff, we learn a lot, but they may be thinking that I was doing a love story after they understand that I was a filmmaker. But you have just to go through what you want to do and be creative a lot for making a project like that. I don't recommend, I don't want to do uh, any film like that after. And, uh, but th that was the point, we, y you need to film a kind of a war on the war. So you have to be really um, courage and you don't, uh, have time to be tired and stuff. It's it's uh, the opposite. It's a really surviving mood, and all the team was uh, so uh, to e each other, and they were really believing to the project. And we finished the project. We didn't expect to get some prizes. I never expected. I was just wanted to finish the film, but I'm here with you, so I think that's the biggest award. So. Um. 
before we speak a bit about the topics of the film, because there is so much to talk about, I also find it interesting the way the editing process is in the film. Also, I'm sure many of you were surprised to see suddenly the title of the film somewhere towards the end. How, how involved, I mean, how did you think of the editing process? I'm pretty sure it was part, it was written also as such, but can you tell us also about the, the real editing work that happened after the film? Was it an easy thing because everything was scripted or did you, uh, did you find other ideas for the editing process? Uh, absolutely, I write before a uh, film like that. You need to know how to cut even on the editing, like if uh, you have to um, edit from a sound to another sound, like helicopter sound was a bridge for me. It was also another character of the films coming and going by like a dinosaur on Jurassic Park, you know, like we know that it's gonna come at this moment. And um, in, uh, using kind of tools that was r really ruining my life was really uh, in the editing before on the script for making really the, the bridge. And uh, by the way, we began the editing uh, the second day of the shooting, so the second day in the night, I was watching the little bit the rush, and um, and my editor uh, was uh, beginning. Uh, she began to edit on this moment, and uh, when I finished after uh, 17 days, uh, 18 days, I slept a little bit, and the 19 days, we began the sh uh, um, editing for being sure that we, uh, if we get all this energy that we want, uh, oof, or we need to um, get some moments more calm. I mostly uh, shoot all the scenes in plan sequence, and I decide cutting it for having our rhythm of the melody of the scene, um, the pulsion and stuff. And uh, the yeah, and the 19th of the, um, the day of the shooting, uh, I saw the 80 percent of the film, which is really heavy when you are really tired. We didn't sleep at all, and I really calling it postpartum like a mother when she get a baby, she can't watch it, you know. And it was really important to be tired at this point, so we continue to making the war, you know, <laughs> and uh, not uh, forgetting what we were leaving all the time. And then uh, we finished uh, one month of editing, and we send it for uh, for uh, found uh, stuff. And then uh, the second month of, of the editing, the one of the second third draft, uh, Venice pick up us. We didn't send it uh, to them; they find us somehow. And they said we want this film because we we never saw uh, in last year's a film was not talking about Anatolia, and there is a woman who's really speaking about something. And uh, we finished uh, for the details uh, the third month, uh, and there were pandemic on the same time. On the between, I stopped one month for a little bit sleeping and being in a pandemic crisis. So like everybody, and uh, yeah, but editing is. Um, for me, it's kind of uh, another. Uh, you have to get the song a song on your mind all the time, and having the tools for making the crescendo of the feeling. Like uh, the last scene of the film for me was being uh, written somehow, but I didn't normally uh, expect to film this way. You need to write the script, and the moment of the um, shooting, you are sometimes there is miracles, and you have to find these miracles and uh, grab that on the editing. So this is the most uh, powerful stuff of the cinema, of course. And uh, the last scene we shot at the six on the morning, when the team was dying of tiredness, and we shoot it like uh, she, the girl, she's almost sleepy, and she was. I think so sick of first of variation of Corona. Everybody was so sick, and uh, yeah, we shoot it like kind of uh, we are dying, but we are still filming, you know. And that's the yeah the soul of the film. You mentioned um, now the comment of uh, Venice that there is a woman. Uh, you're giving a voice to a woman to tell a story in Turkey. Uh, there is a lot of uh, female solidarity in the film. Uh, but there's also a lot of sexism in the film as well. And if we want to speak a tiny bit about Turkey today, we also can maybe address the Istanbul Convention, whatever is happening after that. And I mean, of course, Turkey is no longer part of the Istanbul uh, uh, Convention. I think uh, it became effective on the 1st of July 2021 or something like that. 
How do you feel when you do such a film and you have a topic like the Istanbul Convention, what is happening with women in Turkey constantly in your mind? Uh, being a woman, I mean, you're not waking up like a woman on the morning. You are really uh, becoming a woman on the streets. Which kind of woman it's, is it? It's like when you're sewing disguises watching you on the daily walk, you are having a big danger instinct on your mind. So all day it's like that. Then the government's deciding that the law is going to protect you if you are being uh, raped and stuff. It doesn't matter because they have other politics on their minds. Suddenly, we, we get a big, big chaos on our minds. I mean, we are uh, stuck to each other. We are the, all the feminist movement, all the women, even conservative and LGBT teams, they were completely, actually, together. Like, we cannot uh, think of something else that we are trying to, our protection. And uh, that's really um, another surviving instinct. I mean, I I write I write this uh, film like uh, because I I wanted to show how we are living not just like, like a fem feminist manifesto it's been tired if you are talking all the time about that every day it's useful uh, but I just wanted to show some core or bodies is really walking on the street talking and. Istanbul Convention just arrived last year and I remember I was in the editing uh, in 2020. Uh, I was uh, editing with Theo, the editing uh, guy of the in Paris for the sound, and it was the big co Istanbul Convention manifestation, and they they uh, they put the, um, the cops really get them all. When I was in Paris, I saw all my friends getting really, and I I put their uh, scream on the generic when they are screaming. It's this day, by the way, and a few hours after they were like, really being beaten by the cops. That's coming like that. You cannot just arrest yourself, but it's you have to become something else. Art sometimes is helping about how you have to survive, but just normalizing the situation without making fear of people. Um, I didn't want to, to make a film of feminism and stuff. I am feminist deeply, but we need to normalize and notice uh, some problems that the society doesn't understand, like the ecology. I mean. Ten years ago, you should be an activist, maybe, if we're talking now. Greta Thunberg were, were tweeting yesterday about the COP, that there it was a shit, the talks. Johnson was uh, having a speech about that, like, the forest going to return, like, metrics reload, I don't know. It's like kind of a normalization of some words, really important. Um, so what I wanted to make, it's... Um, normalizing the, the subject and with the uh, tools of cinema because just uh, talking a subject it's not um, it's a demo day for me I mean I'm, I'm coming from classical cinema but I need more instrument for expressing myself like video art and stuff you need to find new waves of script writing new waves to editing otherwise it's gonna be so boring for everybody. We need to get been unified by div diversity and for having a same emotion. So writing a script like that was completely um, kind of uh, like all the emotions of two of five years. Yeah. Are there any questions from the crowd that you would like to address to Azra? We're very happy that you're all here. I'm gonna move the microphone. Yeah, thank you so much. I have a kind of banal question. If you could just maybe go into why 17 days, why you chose to make the film in 17 days, if there were any reasons for that. Uh, thank you. Um, 17 days. Normally it was 18 day, but we ended up before. But seventy thousand dollars. I don't know if you made a shooting before, but it's a short film shooting uh, money normally. So for a long future, it's ten percent of uh, the budget. Like five years ago, I was talking with uh, French co-producers, like uh, thinking, and it was seven uh, seven hundred 
thousand euro at the beginning of the budget because Istanbul is really crowded for shooting. So at the end we get uh, me and my Dilek, uh, I don't know, we get just ten percent of the money. So we decide to shoot like that. It was like poker game, you know. Like I was like, I'm gonna win or lose. So <laughs> really, the French producer were like, you cannot do it with this money. I was like, do you know poker? Yeah. <laughs> I know how to playing it, so I played. I don't recommend 17 days, absolutely. Other questions? Anyone? Mostly they're shocked and they don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> they're afraid that, that I will. But they're all here, so. <laughs> I can ask you, Azra, if um, you said in the beginning that you made this film, that you felt the urgency to make this film, actually. Now that the film is made and you're discovering it again with the audiences, uh, you're having Q&As, you travel, you traveled so much over Europe over the past two months. How did you feel that the reaction from the people, the people had to the film on one hand, but also of the Turkish women who were really affected because I read a bit that the women really had a strong uh, feeling toward the film, a positive one, as opposed to the men who might not necessarily have enjoyed what you're proposing, let's put it this way. It's really difficult because you are uh, you are from Turkey, so suddenly sometimes you are like an exotic fruit. <laughs> Everybody wants to know how I'm living and, and there's also some Turkish people who never could be back in Turkey. They are mostly uh, politically so involved and Kurdish, and they were completely lost with the film because they were like, "This is a political film, but it's not what they want to see." So me, for me, it was like I made my own rules. So that's the most important. Like when the title is coming on the kind of middle of the film, it's saying it is my rules. Like. It's meaning that this title on the middle of the stuff. Um, so they are, and you are just learning that on the same time you are, you need to uh, explain three times more your technique because you are a woman, and I think it's universal, by the way. Um, and on the same time, they they want that you should be um, more um, politically correct not talking uh, everything, and I am talking about one subject is not being uh, deliable to another one, and I am giving the responsibility to this audience saying, okay, w it's not just about feminism and stuff, it's all about uh, some people is really destroying without returning or some human culture and, um, okay, architecturally, but humanly also. And they were in Turkey mostly saying to me uh, that everybody write about the film because we were in Venice and even lef uh, left side and right side, yeah, like extreme right side were saying that I was the not good girl to <laughs> make a film like that. But they were mentioning that the light and the camera was good. Yeni <laughs> Shafak, uh, it was funny. And but on the left side, so as a good, not good girl, I was mentioning some women's problems and LGBT. And, uh, and LGBT uh, people, they are all my friends, so it's another family for me. It's normal to showing it. And uh, the left side also was writing why I, I show so many women also. That's the funny st stuff at the end. It's really men's planning saying sh why she made that. Why she, and, and you are understanding that the society is completely on a one sense and they don't accept, want to accept first and they are shocked when something else is speaking. And uh, this is the problem, I think, at the end. Even we are not talking about the film, we are trying to talk something else. And, uh, and I think the art is cool for, uh, for learning uh, stuff. It's Bruce Lee words, by the way. <laughs> to be water, you know. <laughs> You are trying to get the way for showing some some how you need to show you are accepted or not, but it's another point of view. Maybe you're gonna change also the world. It's uh, just a word, and yeah, we will see. Uh, yes. Hi, 
Hi. Um, first of all, thank you so much. I love the film. And I was so surprised seeing the streets there because uh, my family is actually living in Gusu. So I was so surprised. I didn't expect it to see because then you always see um, when you see, I mean, when you're watching uh, Turkish TV shows or a lot of films, you always see this glamorous side of Istanbul. And so I just wanted to ask you why you picked that part of the city, Gülsuyu, and um, I mean, uh, you shortly said that it was because there are a lot of Kurdish people live there, but uh, are there other reasons? So, thank you for your words. Um, uh, I'm coming from architect and urban planner family, so uh, this ghetto, Gülansu, not ghetto, but this area, was the only one of the only uh, area who's not been destroyed by the, by the government. Years ago, there were Sulukule. I, it was a Romani area, who's the oldest uh, Romani area on Europe, 500 years, and they destroyed it completely. And I was um, living uh, or trying to make workshop with friends, and my uh, father was um, trying to make it uh, survive before the destruction. And before I was in Zeytin Bruno, when I was young, uh, for working with kids, some some uh, areas they are just been destroyed. And Gulansu, it was the one of the last that I found in Istanbul, and they were from this part of uh, origin. And there were no um, passing by people. There were not authorization. Uh, they were not giving authorization for the f uh, for the filmmakers. But when I tell them that I all my life, uh, my parents, they were making uh, survive um, some areas like that because uh, I also lived in Mardin, a Kurdish city. I, I UNESCO protect, uh, made a protection for that. And like that, you can also pr protect the stories, the human people, they're happy there. And what I learned is that about life. And uh, all the destruction, it's been uh, so systematic from the Turkish government years ago, but in 20 years mostly. And uh, it was the only uh, part of Istanbul that I could find. And I remember when the tanks were arriving, they, uh, th my assistant said that these people arrived for saying, we're going to protect you, don't worry. It's uh, beautiful because they, we really became a family. They were really amazing with us. We also pick up some actors from there, like the boyfriend of Didem. It's a guy from there. We uh, educate some people for the production. Um, we really became kind of a family for saying, okay, we are, I said to them, I need to film this area for archiving and uh, showing how it's important. Because an area like that, it make no sense maybe, but when you're living inside, it's really, the only uh, mom that you have your identity. This politics makes you no identity or one kind of identity that they want to put. And it's just erasing They are even not asking you. It's like, uh, it's a big uh, er erosion. And, uh, and Gulansu was really important for us um, to showing it. And this beautiful view of Istanbul is there, by the way. I mean, Istanbul, uh, it's... Um, it's a city who doesn't have a soul for me, actually. Um, I'm talking like an old woman, but uh, I'm old, by the way. And um, yeah, we it's the last years of Istanbul, I think. You can have a little monument and stuff, but the life is completely chaotic and all the time, big rhythm, and you cannot really breathe. The noise, the, the stuff is something else. It's not so cinematic, I think, at the end. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up as we have to prepare the next screening. We're very happy to be able to have late nights again. Yay. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Azra is going to be also be outside. If you have some questions for her, she would be happy to discuss with you. Uh, and thank you for coming and have a nice evening. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.